Hello and welcome. I am Stephen Dubomirsky from the University of Washington, and it is my pleasure on behalf of my co-authors to present Dynamic Tensor Rematerialization, our new online algorithm for checkpointing deep learning models. As this graph from the MLSYS 2020 paper Checkmate shows, the latest deep learning models make full use of the physical memory available to them. They are bounded by it. Parrish Jane and his co-authors describe this limitation as a memory wall, since hardware constraints limit the deep learning applications that can be explored, thereby also limiting the pace of research. Reducing the amount of memory required to train deep learning models is thus not only a means for making better use of existing hardware, but also a means of decoupling model exploration from the business decisions of silicon manufacturers. One means of reducing the amount of memory required for training is checkpointing, which is the focus of our work. Checkpointing techniques trade time for space by freeing intermediate activations and later recomputing them. Recent work in deep learning has shown that these trade-offs can be favorable. For example, our co-author Tianchi Chen helped develop a scheme for dividing data flow graphs into segments that are recomputed during the backward pass. Subsequent techniques have applied similar segmenting approaches to more general graphs. Checkmate, which I mentioned earlier, uses a reduction to integer linear programming to plan evictions and recomputations to find provably optimal rematerialization schedules. Optimal. Now that has a very nice ring to it. Does that mean that checkpointing is a solved problem? Not entirely. Despite their favorable computation memory trade-offs, these past checkpointing approaches all rely on static planning, namely by choosing in advance which tensors should be freed and recomputed and at which point. That has its limitations. Static planning requires knowing the entire computation in advance and introduces assumptions about models and training procedures. Some models can be dynamic and some applications may require higher order derivatives, and it would be incumbent on the planning procedure to be able to take that into account. Moreover, models are continually becoming larger and static planning on that scale can be expensive in its own right. Are those just costs of doing business? Must we accept the limitations of static planning? Our work shows that, in fact, we do not. And in the rest of the talk, I will describe our method for choosing values to recompute without static planning that nevertheless achieves comparable computation memory trade-offs. Rather than static planning, our technique approaches the problem of checkpointing as a dynamic analysis, collecting information at runtime in order to have access to more precise information and make fewer assumptions. Hence, we call our method dynamic tensor rematerialization, or DTR for short. DTR acts as a tensor-level cache that allows allocations to proceed as normal, intervening only when there isn't enough memory left. At that point, DTR uses a heuristic to choose tensors to evict from memory in order to make room. If an evicted tensor is later needed, DTR will recompute it on the fly. DTR can handle arbitrarily dynamic models, presents a simple interface that could be cleanly incorporated into deep learning frameworks, and, despite its conceptual simplicity, is still competitive with static approaches with fairly limited overhead at runtime. Here is an example computation trace to show how DTR trains a model under a restricted memory budget. DTR has a very reductive view of the computation. We don't know whether this is the forward pass or backward pass, and we don't know the future. All we know is that these are the tensors in memory right now, these are their dependencies, and we are computing T7. Note that the values needed for the current operation are pinned in memory to ensure there won't be loops of evictions and recomputations. Right now, we're at our memory budget, and one of the arguments needed to compute T7 has been evicted, so we'll have to recompute it. The argument needed to recompute T5 is present, but there's no room to store the result. To make room, the heuristic picks T2 to evict. Now we have room to recompute T5 using T3, so that's what happens next. T5 is back, so both of T7's parents are in memory, but we still don't have room for T7 itself we have to evict again. T3 is no longer pinned, so the heuristic picks that to evict. Now we are free to compute T7, and the computation can now proceed no matter what may lie ahead. We can encapsulate all the reasoning shown in the last example as nothing but a few callbacks invoked at different points in the computation, a nice, neat, simple interface. All of the intelligence in the system comes from the heuristic for choosing evictions, which allows for exploring different policies as we do in our evaluation. What, what do heuristics in DTR look like? Similarly to heuristics in caching, a DTR heuristic is a prediction of which tensor is least valuable and hence is the best to evict. We devised a heuristic by the following intuition. The best tensors to evict are cheap, to avoid expensive recomputations, stale, meaning they are unlikely to be needed soon, and large, meaning they would gain back the most space. A runtime can track these by timing operators and noting access times, choosing the tensor that minimizes cost over memory time staleness.
I encourage you to see the full paper for an ablation study comparing variations of these metrics, including simple baselines, as well as a discussion on the subtleties of tracking tensor cost. Given a heuristic using cost and size, we prove that DTR can train an n-layer feedforward network in square root of n memory with a linear number of operations, which is the same performance bound as the Chen gradient checkpointing work, but without any advanced knowledge of the model. And now for the graphic that motivated this presentation's background. To give some intuition for the full proof in the paper, here's an illustration of uh, a simulation of DTR training an n-layer feedforward network on a budget of square root n, assuming, as in the gradient checkpointing paper, that each tensor has unit cost in both computation and memory. The orange pixels show which tensors are live at which point in the computation. What is interesting about this behavior is that DTR is emergently reproducing behavior similar to the Chen gradient checkpointing technique. The horizontal lines correspond to long-lived checkpoints, and the filled-in triangles correspond to recomputing segments between checkpoints. I encourage you to consult the full proof for an argument that the checkpoints between these segments will be of a bounded distance from each other, and that the cost of each segment can be bounded by a constant, which is what allows us to conclude that the overall cost will be linear. In the paper, we also provide a proof showing that an adversarial example can be constructed for any heuristic, meaning that no heuristic is perfect, which motivates our empirical exploration of more heuristics. To compare the effectiveness of different heuristics against each other, we ran simulations of DTR on logs of the computations for various models. For different heuristics, we compare the overhead in terms of the costs of any additional tensor operators to the memory budgets they can handle, expressed as fractions of the total memory required to train the model without checkpointing. We considered several heuristics, including ones inspired by past work and variants of our cost staleness size heuristic. We observe that heuristics taking into account more metadata are able to accommodate lower budgets. But nevertheless, even simple heuristics like the humble LRU can sometimes reduce the amount of memory needed. We examined eight models in total and found similar trends across them. These included dynamic models. Unrolled GAN in particular features second-order derivatives for meta-learning, which DTR was able to handle without any special adaptations. Given the strong performance of our cost staleness size heuristics, we next, we next compared their performance against static techniques, using the Checkmate MLSYS 2020 artifact to perform a direct comparison in simulation. We found that our cost staleness size heuristic was neck and neck with Checkmate's optimal solution, but ran much faster. Checkmate's ILP solver needed seconds per batch, even for these relatively small models, but DTR completed the same models in milliseconds. Even the simple LRU heuristic was able to hit lower budgets than many other static techniques. However, these simulated comparisons only consider the cost in terms of additional tensor operations. To evaluate what the overhead would be from the runtime system in practice, we built a DTR prototype in PyTorch, and it was relatively simple for us to implement it because, like the callbacks I showed you, it was essentially a thin wrapper over tensor operators and allocations to perform evictions when necessary. Even without making any deep modifications to PyTorch's memory allocator, our prototype was able to run training batches under much lower budgets. The prototype naively loops over tensors when it's time to choose an eviction, and it recomputes heuristic values each time, but despite the simplicity of its implementation and these uh, very simple choices, the runtime overhead was nevertheless much less than the cost of the baseline GPU computations, and it can surely be further reduced with more implementation effort. And as with the simulated trials, we ran some dynamic models, including Unrolled GAN, which the prototype handled out of the box. We are not quite sure why our profiling instrumentation had difficulty tracking the breakdown of computations in unrolled, in unrolled GAN, but we suspect it's due to the model's use of Python reflection and external dependencies. Nevertheless, the prototype was still able to run it under lower budgets, showing the generality of our approach. Our formal bounds, simulated comparisons, and empirical evaluation show some early promise for handling checkpointing as a dynamic analysis. We hope that our work will help to enable the training of larger or more diverse models and make the best use of hardware resources toward that end. We see many possibilities for extensions to the system, such as by learning heuristics rather than designing them by hand, or extending the system to retain knowledge of earlier batches. We would also be interested to apply DTR to distributed settings or identify ways to use it alongside systems that swap tensors between machines. The simplicity of the design and the prototype implementation encourages us to explore such possibilities. And I encourage you to have a look at the prototype evaluation and the DTR simulator. We would love to discuss the implementation and options for improving or extending it, including to domains other than deep learning. My co-authors and I thank you very much for your time and attention, and we welcome you to reach out to us. And please allow me to thank the Ada Center for supporting our work.